Hello, my name is Brent Carter. I'm at the Library of Virginia in Richmond. The Library of Virginia serves the people of Virginia much as the Library of Congress and the National Archives serve the people of the United States. Our archivists have brought out for us four of Virginia's state constitutions. The archives preserves the records of all of the Virginia conventions that wrote constitutions, and they are extraordinarily important documents. They establish the structure of our government, they identify and protect our rights as people and as a community, and they show how Virginia has changed over the many decades. The first constitution that we have out here is actually the first constitution of the state of Virginia that was adopted in June of 1776. It includes a preamble that's much like the Declaration of Independence that recites why Virginia became independent of the King of Great Britain, and it provided for a weak governor and a very strong legislature. It created a General Assembly of two houses that elected all of the executive and judicial officials in the state. That constitution limited the vote to adult white men who owned a certain minimum amount of land, and it awarded seats in the General Assembly uh, on a discriminatory basis that favored white men who owned land. We also have out today the Constitution that a convention of 1867 and 1868 wrote. This Constitution, following the Civil War, is a remarkable document. It has had an ill fame in Virginia's history as a result of the fact that it allowed African American men to take part in politics. And during part of the 1870s and 1880s, African American men held the balance of political power between two competing factions of white politicians. This Constitution required the General Assembly to create the state's first free system of public schools for all children. It empowered African American men to vote. It created the modern uh, county manager and county board of supervisors form of government. It extended democracy in Virginia much farther than it had ever been any time in the past. Because it was such a progressive document, it fell into disfavor with white supremacists late in the 19th century. They maligned it, they insulted it, they created a tradition or a myth in Virginia that that constitution was always hated by the white people and that white people had been extremely eager to replace it with a white supremacist document. In fact, it was a good constitution and there was almost no complaint about it until the white supremacists themselves began demanding that uh, the constitution be rewritten so as to deprive African American men of the right to vote and to drive them out of public life entirely. We also have on display the Constitution of 1902 that a convention of 100 white men wrote and put into effect without a ratification referendum. They promulgated this Constitution. The purpose of this Constitution was to disfranchise African American men. In the process, they also disfranchised about half of the white men who were then able to vote. This Constitution turned back many of the democratic reforms of the 19th century. We can open it to a page that shows some of the features, like requiring a poll tax to register to vote, that this convention contrived in order to disfranchise African Americans. It's very detailed. They went into extreme detail to make sure that it would do precisely what they wanted. In fact, this section on the franchise is so long because it has so much detail that it's almost as long as the entire Constitution of 1776. Now this Constitution did do one very important progressive thing. It created a fourth branch of state government. In addition to having um, legislature, executive, and judiciary, it created the State Corporation Commission, a fourth branch of state government that exercises legislative, executive, and judicial authority to regulate the state's corporations, specifically put into the Constitution to regulate railroads, because people at the time knew that railroads were imposing discriminatory freight rates and passenger rates, that they were extorting um, high rates from some people and not others, and also people believed that the powerful railroads were corrupting Virginia politics. So that one progressive important feature of the Constitution of 1902 attracted national attention. The State Corporation Commission 
almost from the very beginning, was one of the most important and influential and effective state regulatory agencies in the United States. The fourth constitution that is on display is nothing to look at. It's just a printed document. It contains signatories of the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate because this constitution was revised by the General Assembly and submitted to a ratification vote in 1970 in the form that in legislative matters is called an amendment in the form of a substitute. Strike out everything and insert in lieu thereof this new constitution. This is a remarkably fine constitution, was ratified in 1970 and became effective on the 1st of July 1971. It stripped out all of the disfranchisement provisions that had been put into the Constitution of 1902. It stripped out a requirement for mandatory racial segregation in public schools. It stripped out all of the old Jim Crow racial discrimination features. It also included a new feature in the Bill of Rights stating that the, no government should discriminate against any Virginian on account of race, color, religion, national origin, or sex. That placed Virginia right in the forefront among the states in protecting individual liberties. It brought Virginia's law and constitution directly into compliance with the legal reforms of the civil rights movement. And because it required equal populations in all legislative districts, it also made much more difficult for politicians to gerrymander the state in order to maintain partisan control and to exclude African Americans from public office, even in places where African Americans formed a majority of the population. This constitution also includes another first. It includes a new provision that states specifically that it's the responsibility of the government of Virginia to protect the air, water, and natural resources of the state for all of the people of the state. 1971 is very early in the modern conservation movement. And here, Virginia Constitution is right in the forefront of that. It's a remarkable document. It went into effect in 1971, and in 2021, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of this best Virginia Constitution. Thank you.